As I have mentioned in the past, Tesla has a lot riding on the success of the 4680 batteries. In fact, several of Tesla's vehicles, like the Tesla Semi, are especially dependent upon these batteries. But are the first generation 4680 battery cells good enough to make the Tesla Semi a viable commercial product? In this video, I'd like to answer that question with data that we now have about the 4680 batteries. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John, and welcome to CleanerWatt. Back in November of 2020, Elon Musk was interviewed as part of a European conference on batteries, and during that interview, he said the following about the cargo capacity of the Tesla Semi. At this point, we think that we can have less than one ton cargo reduction, and we think long term, it's going to be zero cargo reduction for electric trucks. Now, why is Elon Musk bringing up cargo weight when it comes to the Tesla Semi? Well, the easy answer for that is that batteries are heavy and semis that drive on US and international roads are only allowed to weigh so much. So the heavier the truck, the less cargo that that truck can actually carry. While a bit of extra weight is not really a deal breaker when it comes to most passenger vehicles, when it comes to the economic viability of an electric semi truck, weight is a big deal. Yes, electric semi trucks like the Tesla semi should cost less to operate per mile than a regular diesel truck. However, if the Tesla Semi cannot haul as much cargo weight due to the added weight of really heavy batteries, this could actually negate a lot of the financial incentives for driving such a truck. If an electric truck is not able to carry as much cargo as a diesel truck, that means that the electric truck has to make more trips to carry that same cargo, or you need a larger fleet. So obviously that changes the economic viability of a truck. In the United States, the Department of Transportation allows traditional semi trucks to weigh up to 80,000 pounds um, total. And that's including the weight of the truck, the trailer, and the cargo. Um, for clean energy semis like the Tesla Semi, the Department of Transportation has made an allowance of an extra 2,000 pounds. So a Tesla Semi, for instance, would be allowed to have a total gross vehicle weight fully loaded up to 82,000 pounds. So ideally, an electric truck like the Tesla Semi or another electric semi truck, those vehicles, in order to be a no-brainer for companies, they really need to have a very small or no weight penalty as compared to a diesel truck due to really heavy batteries or poor efficiency. Um, but is that the case with the Tesla Semi, at least one that would be equipped with Generation 1 4680 batteries? Let's dive into some details, what we know so far, and see if we can answer that question. First of all, we need to figure out the weight of the Tesla semi truck itself and the weight of a traditional diesel truck. Here's a Facebook post posted by the Donner Pass uh, CHP, and I talked about this roughly two years ago in a video, but I had less data then. And as you can see here, the CHP mentioned that the truck is operating at approximately 75,000 pounds and the truck is meeting or exceeding the range estimates. Now, as you can see in the picture, there are concrete blocks on that semi truck. And based on previous research, which I'll link to that video if you're curious to watch all the details on how I arrived at this, these large blocks weigh approximately 4,200 pounds each. And based on other footage, this Tesla Semi is apparently hauling nine of these. So nine of these at 42,000 pounds each comes to around 37,800 pounds of cargo. Now, based on previous research, I found that the typical diesel Semi weighs somewhere around 20,000 pounds. A typical flatbed trailer weighs around 10,000 pounds. So truck and trailer together, that's 30,000 pounds. And if your total max weight limit is 80,000 pounds, that allows you to tow, for instance, in this example, 50,000 pounds of cargo without surpassing that DOT limit. We know from that CHP Facebook post that that Tesla Semi weighed around 75,000 pounds fully loaded. And if you subtract the 37,800 pounds of concrete blocks that we estimated and a 10,000 pound flatbed trailer, that leaves you with a total truck weight unloaded without a trailer of 27,200 pounds. Thus, we can estimate that if the Tesla Semi has the same energy density and the same 
battery pack setup as they did in 2019, which I'll talk about. I think that's very doubtful. But if that were the case and that semi truck were driving on the road today, that vehicle would have a max payload of somewhere around 44,800 pounds. I believe that this 2019 test of the Tesla Semi was using 2170 battery technology since the 4680 batteries had not been announced by Tesla. And if the 4680 batteries did exist in 2019, they were likely in a very extremely early stage of development. Now you could probably still make a case for the economic viability of a Tesla Semi that could haul uh, somewhere a bit over 40,000 pounds of cargo. Um, but when you look at these numbers and you have over a 5,000 pound variance based on uh, my calculations, which I believe are pretty close, they may not be exact, but I believe they're pretty close here. Um, that really makes this a little bit less of a no brainer. But what about if you equipped this Tesla Semi with generation one, what we know so far about the generation one 4680 battery cells, how would that change this equation? If you remember at battery day, Tesla talked about some serious range increases that should be a result of 4680 battery technology. And this means that we should expect energy density increases with the 4680 batteries as well. But what's the reality? While we don't have the exact energy density numbers of these 4680 batteries just yet, we do have some pretty good data that is starting to come in. For instance, Jordan from the limiting factor found in his um, analyzing of the 4680 battery, the generation one 4680 battery, that it's estimated that the total cell energy of the battery cell that he tested was somewhere around 96 to 99 watt hours. Also several months ago at Troy test like on Twitter estimated that the total cell energy of the 4680 battery cell, the generation one version was around 98 watt hours. And uh, somebody that uh, sent me information mentioned um, based on the amp hour rating of that battery cell and using some calculations similar to what the limiting factor used, I estimate that the total cell energy of the 4680 battery cell based on that data could be somewhere around 92.5 to 95 watt hours. So based on calculations from the limiting factor YouTube channel, an Inside EVs article that referenced at Troy Tesla's uh, Twitter post, and based on data from the anonymous source that I mentioned, you can see that based on data that we have so far, the estimated cell level energy density of the 4680 battery cells is likely somewhere between 260 watt hours per kilogram and up to around 296 watt hours per kilogram. However, if you've watched this channel for very long, you know that I always talk about the fact that cell level energy density, while that's important, the real number that matters is pack level energy density. Now for comparison, as I mentioned, that CHP Facebook post, uh, that was taken in 2019. So we have to compare 2019, 2170 battery technology um, to first of all, get our baseline. Now back in 2019, the cell level energy density of Tesla's 2170 battery cells was around 247 watt hours per kilogram. And this comes from a 2019 Clean Technica article, which I will link to in the description below. Also, according to official EPA documents, a long range Tesla Model 3 from 2019 had a pack level energy density of around 150 watt hours per kilogram. Just for reference here in 2022, Tesla has been able to improve both the cell level and pack level energy density of their 2170 cells. Uh, at the cell level, I estimate that it has improved to around 263 watt hours per kilogram. And according to official EPA documents for a 2022 Model Y long range or performance version, um, that pack level energy density is around 180 watt hours per kilogram. But how can we estimate the pack level energy density for a structural battery pack with 4680 battery cells? Thankfully at Battery Day, when Tesla was talking about the benefits of the 4680 battery technology, they mentioned in their range increase category that the cell vehicle integration, basically the structural battery pack, should lead to around a 14% range increase. So if we assume that there's around a 14% efficiency increase uh, with a structural battery pack over a traditional 2170 non-structural pack, um, using data that would have been relevant around September of 2020, I pulled up an official EPA document for a 2021 Tesla Model Y, and this document was actually dated sometime around September of 2020, so I believe this is relevant data. And the pack level energy density of that Model Y was around 165 watt hours per kilogram, according to this document. 
I do believe at this time that the cell level energy density of the 2170 cells was right around that 263 watt hours per kilogram number as well. So if you assume that a structural battery pack improves efficiency of a battery pack by around 14%, if we use data that was available around September of 2020, that leads us to a low end estimate of a pack level energy density of the 4680 structural battery pack of around 186 watt hours per kilogram. And if we use um, higher estimates and all the way up to a 14% increase over 2022 technology, that would lead us all the way up to a pack level energy density of around 231 watt hours per kilogram. So we have the basic weight of the Tesla Semi uh, in 2019 with 2170 battery tech. We have um, some estimates for the pack level energy density with generation one structural battery packs. But what about the actual battery pack size for the Tesla Semi? We know based on Tesla's website that fully loaded, the Tesla Semi is able to achieve around 500 miles of range, uh, the one with a larger battery pack. And Tesla estimates that the Semi should have an efficiency of less than two kilowatt hours needed to travel a mile. If you assume um, an efficiency of 1.99 kilowatt hours per mile, that gives you a 995 kilowatt hour pack. Um, however, based on other estimates and some comments by Elon Musk in the past, this Inside EVs article estimates that the pack size of the long range Tesla Semi is around 875 kilowatt hours. So we don't know the exact number, but it's very likely that the pack size of the Tesla Semi is between 875 a kilowatt hours and a megawatt hour, 1000 kilowatt hours. And so for my calculations, I'm going to assume a 900 kilowatt hour pack for this long range Tesla Semi. So with 2019 technology, a 900 kilowatt hour pack likely weighed somewhere around 6,000 kilograms or 13,228 pounds. Using the pack level energy density numbers that we talked about a minute ago, between 186 to 231 watt hours per kilogram, that would mean that a 900 kilowatt hour pack would weigh somewhere between 3,896 to 4,839 kilograms. So going back to our truck weight estimates based on these numbers that we've gathered, if in 2019, a 900 kilowatt hour pack weighed 13,228 pounds, if we subtract weight based on my estimations for how much the 4680 structural battery pack has improved the weight of the Tesla Semi, that would mean that very likely a Tesla Semi driving around right now with first generation 4680 batteries would only very likely have a very small max payload penalty due to heavy batteries. And if the weight penalty is really small like this, this makes the uh, current generation of the Tesla Semi, even with existing generation one 4680 battery cells, in my opinion, very viable. And I believe this will improve with the second generation and third generation 4680 battery cells. As the rumors suggest, the energy density of these battery cells should go up as Tesla improves these batteries. I'll revisit this topic once I have more data and once we have some official EPA documents with the weight of the Tesla Semi, um, it will be interesting. And maybe when we get some more information about the pack level energy density of a 4680 battery pack officially from EPA documents or a teardown from Monroe, for instance, something like that, I'll revisit this topic. But based on what I can tell right now, um, even with first generation 4680 battery cells, the Tesla Semi should be commercially viable and I see it just getting better with time. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, once again, if you work in the battery industry or the automotive industry and you have anything um, to share with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I also want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.